Well, thank you, Coach Banstra. This is going to be your worst one oh, yet. Stop. Because well, I'll just get to it. it me and Coach Banstra talked about what I should present. Talk, I ended up being the cat's approach to the offensive line. I'll get to why it's called approach with just the offensive line here in a second. Um, first, thanks, Coach Banstra, for letting me talk. Um, you guys can make fun of my nerdy side here on my background and stuff, which I'll get to here, why it's like that. First, there's my personal email, my school email, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, both of them, because I'll get to my podcast one. Instagram, cell phone, if you guys want to talk ball, if you guys have questions, just shoot the shit, whatever you want. Uh, just reach out. there; It's all right there for you. A little bit about me. Right now, I'm the offensive line coach, run game coordinator at Addison Trail High School in Illinois. It's a western suburb of Chicago. Um, this fall will be year 15 of me coaching football. I've done it since I was 18, 19 years old. Um, currently, the freshman boys basketball coach and JV softball coach at Addison. So I do all three, so there's no rest time. It's all the way through. Um, I've also coached high school baseball, boys track, girls track, middle school basketball. So I've almost done everything. Uh, all I know is to coach. That's my life. That's all I know. Um, for football, I've coached every position in football. I've been an assistant varsity DC. I've been a varsity offense coordinator. Um, mainly offensive line coaching has been kind of my, you know, specialty, I guess. That's how I get jobs because there's no all line coaches out there, I guess. But I have coached every position out there in football. About me still. I'm like Coach Banstra. I have a podcast on YouTube, The Coach Steve Show. Started in February of 2020, right before COVID hit. And then we all know what kind of happened after that. I've been so blessed to talk to coaches all over the country, from football to basketball, uh, high school, college. Doesn't matter, every single level of college, all high school. Um, it's a hodgepodge. Uh, I love talking about Illinois football. I love talking about Illinois basketball. Unfortunately, the Chicago Bears, but we'll see. There's offensive schemes, defensive schemes. And if you can't tell by the setup, I love Marvel and shows like that. So there is a segment on there for that. So it's kind of a hodgepodge, but try to give something to everybody. Um, my time at Addison Trail, and this is what I wanted to get into, what kind of led me to thinking about Feed the Cats and kind of go through this little history of it. Um, but first of all, my time at Addison Trail, I took the job in summer of 2020. I think it was June. Thinking COVID wouldn't last as long as it did, and you know, we all kind of know what happened. Um, we could not play in the fall. We were able to play in the spring. In Illinois, they jam-packed all three seasons between January and the end of May, beginning of June. Uh, I did coach all three in that time period, so it was a rough go. So my first year at that spring season, we only played uh, – you know, about seven games, six, seven games, only won one. Uh, it was a tough go. So then in June, the state said, go back to normal, do everything as you normally would. So we went right back to basketball camps, football camps, weightlifting, like there was no time off. Going into that fall of 2021, uh, we go 0-9. And it was the second time playing or coaching career going 0-9. We had tons and tons of injuries in that season. We went through five quarter people playing quarterback. We went through three or four tight ends. I never had the same starting offensive line group at all. And you see that at the bottom from that spring season all the way through the fall of 2022. I never had the same starting old line group for any game. It was always something different, injury, sick, whatever it was. But that fall 09 season, we had a, like, I, I even got like the linebackers being hurt. We had received, like, we just had injuries all over the place. Uh, then the fall of 2022, uh, we go two and seven, so, you know, 200% increase, whatever that was. Then comes the fall of 23. Uh, we go seven and four overall, six and three regular season. In Illinois, you only get nine games in the regular season. We made the playoffs at six and three. It was the first playoff berth for the school since 2014. We had to go on the road and play a team, and – we end up winning that game, and that was the first road playoff win for the school since 1997. And in 1997, they had gone to the state title game, so it had been that long. And then the second round, we had a home playoff game. We hosted, obviously, and that was the first one for the school since 2014. We lost by two scores 
turned the ball over eight times, just a bad game. But from the spring to the fall, never had the same starting O line. So during this time with the injuries, with how I never had the same starting O line group, I always and the podcast, doing the podcast and learning from different people. How could I be different? How could I bring something to the program and be different? And uh, coming into last year, kind of fell on the feed of cat, the feed the cats, or the sprint based football approach. Um, so, real quick, everybody probably knows what feed the cats is in sprint based football. But like, if you don't know, I put sprint training. I hate the word training. I hate the word workout with it because then kids obviously don't want to show up. But it's about getting faster. It's about um, not that old school way of thinking, which I think some old school ways of thinking still work, but we have to adapt them. Um, you know, like what is feed the cat sprint training? We don't run for an hour. I've had kids say, well, I don't know if I want to, I host sprint training. I've had kids say, well, you're only doing things for 20 minutes. Why do I show up unless it's for an hour? That makes no sense. Why would I run you for an hour and tear your body down and never recover to where it can be faster. Um, old school mentality of thinking is no gassers. I'm not going to run them for an hour. We're not going to do things for a minute straight. And then like in 10 seconds, do it again. The body's not going to react that way. Um, so I really started thinking about this. And I put these names up here because my first um, introduction to it was my friend, Coach West. He coaches at Bismarck Henning High School in Illinois. It's in central Illinois. I would say maybe 35, 40 minutes east of the U of I. Um, and he did it for track and he, he explained it to me, but my old school way of thinking never processed it. He said, Steve, we were probably the laziest team you've ever seen. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, we'll do something for like, you know, 10 to 15 seconds tops. Like, like if he's doing a sprint day or whatever it is, he times their sprint and they sit for five minutes. And he goes, we are just incredibly, it looks like we're a lazy team, but we're getting faster. None of it computed with me. I had Coach Dixon on. He is big with the sprint base football. He's the head football coach at Camp Point in Illinois. Um, and I had him on. And my big thing was like the weight room because my mind wasn't comprehending the – you don't hit on Tuesdays. You go full pads on Wednesday, and you don't really hit then either. Your practice are only an hour and a half. Like none of this makes sense to me and never processed. On the podcast, Coach Mueller, he, he's big in sprint base football talked with him. It started to click. Then I talked to the guy that started it was coach Hollers. I did it backwards, but then I talked to him. And when I talked to him, I was already drinking the Kool-Aid. I was full go. So I wanted to be different. How can I get these kids healthier? Seeing all the injuries we had, we have kids playing both ways. We are not a school that can two platoon. Like we can only, we have to go both ways. So what, what could I do to be different? So last year I did with just the old line this year I've started working with the kids in the morning. I called it feed the cats. We are called the blazers. So they wanted to call it feed the flame. So now it's called feed the flame. The thing that I told the old line coming in last year was I am changing my approach. The big thing coach Tony Holler says is tired is the enemy, not the goal. I do not want them to be tired all the time. I'm not saying we don't work hard. I'm not saying that in those bursts of reps that they're not working hard, but we have to understand that I can't make them do certain things and then immediately in five seconds do it again. That's not realistic to football. We have like 30, 40 seconds in between plays and the play only lasts about six seconds. Um, less is more. So what I mean by that is I don't want to come in with 10 drills that we got to do. I don't want to try to jam pack everything in. It's okay to break things up and work things different days. I did not do a one-on-one -on -one drill at all last year. And I know o line coaches, sometimes that's what we want to do. Trust me, that's all I know. I knew that from a player. I knew that from coaching. I did not do a one-on-one -on -one drill because, to me, it was not realistic of this base block that we're going to see. The old school, quote-unquote, way is we're going to hit, we're going to hit, we're going to hit and be physical. To me, that was not making the body work. You might get two good reps out of it, but if you continue it for five minutes and you're trying to – get them going then you go on to the rest of your practice well why is my why is his skip pull look so bad uh well this was offensive time now he's gotta go play defense and the coach is yelling at him for not being able to tackle and keep up he's tired the body is rejecting what we're doing less hitting i 
used way more hand shields than ever before, working on footwork, working on aiming points, um, quick reps, but less of them. So if I get 10 minutes of individual time, I really had to make sure what I was doing in that moment. And I had to film it a little more. Um, I had to quickly coach it. There was no time to stop it. I was looking for quick reps with ample time to like rest in between. I don't give them a whole minute. If they do a rep for three seconds, they switch with their partner holding the hand shield or whatever it was. That's like the rest period. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't have all these different types of footworks. Like why, why would I have all that in their mind? Um, I was simple with it. You know, there's so many different ways. We were inside zone, wide zone, uh, sweep team, um, kind of like our sweep and we ran power. So I had to make sure I did not want a million ways to block inside zone and different footwork. I did not want to have a million different things for wide zone or power. Like I had to keep it as simple as possible in order to make this happen. Happen. You know, I put hand shields. I, I know people hate hand shields, but we use them to focus on placement. They have the number ones. Sometimes I'd have them just throw the hand shield off to where they could see the jersey and we wouldn't go full go. If we did go like very quickly, it was on air just to work on footwork and where everything else. I would get cones out for like skip pulling. Where's the gap? Where are you hitting? Put cones out for the linebacker. Where's your eyes? I can see where their eyes are. Just a lot of less hitting. I know we used to go five on four or, you know, you put a defense out there and say, go, 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 go. I'm not doing that in individual time. I'm saving that for team and inside run period. I'm not doing that down there with the old line because I want them to be fresh especially because they play defense. And the big thing is rest. I would, if I had 10 minutes of individual time, I technically only had eight because about eight, eight and a half, I tell them to walk and get water, like go around, don't be on the field, go get water and rest, rest for that little bit. And that was a big thing I had to change because for us, we were not a huge old line speed and confidence. If they could play fast, they were confident where they're going on their assignments. Uh, they, we were going to be much better. Um, so confidence and speed, the big thing was healthy. And I'll get to our injury part here soon, but we stayed incredibly healthy as an old line. My goal was we are going to try to outlast the other team. Uh, only one kid on the old line started on defense. The rest didn't, but they'd rotate in. So my job was to make sure that we could outlast teams because we weren't the biggest and the strongest teams. Um, they were uncomfortable with it they, because the years passed. I'm yelling, I'm chewing at them. I'm, you know, all into it. Hit them harder, block. You got to drive them backwards. We're going to do one-on-ones to make you tough. We're going to hit, we're going to hit, we're going to hit. I mean, I think that speed and confidence will make a kid more physical. If they're speed, they're confident, they're stronger because the sprint stuff makes them stronger in the weight room because their body's more relaxed because sprinting deals with our nervous system. Weight room deals with the rest of the muscles. I think that will make a kid more physical than trying to like hit, 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 and get that out of them. Some kids it works. I had a kid like that. We weren't hitting as much. He was my senior starter offensive lineman, started since he was a sophomore. He came up to me in the summer and he goes, what the hell is wrong with you? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, where's the old coach, Steve? I, we're supposed to be hitting. When are we going to hit? When are we going to do this? They were uncomfortable with it. Week two, we're in a tight game. Half the time I go in and I say, guys, how do we feel? And they were like, you feel pretty good. Like we're not too tight. And as the games went on in the year, I kept asking them that, how do we feel? Which is weird. Cause at halftime you're supposed to yell and hoop and holler. And I'd be like, guys, how do we feel? And they're like, well, we feel pretty good. And there were some teams, as you saw the record I put up there, we started out last some teams up front more normal than we ever did. And that created toughness. That word grit. I don't like, so I put that up there. Like, the toughness comes from the other stuff, the grit, whatever. I'm not calling it grit. We're going to be a gritty team at all. The hitting makes you tough. I had to get away from that. You can practice form and all that stuff, but if they're confident, they're going to go out there and hit. It took a lot of adapting, practice planning. Like I said, I don't have just an offense to work with. They have to go practice defense. So if the first 40 minutes, let's say, is offense, then the second 40 minutes is defense. I had to try to work with the defensive coaches to see what they were doing because if you think about it, if we all get our way, we'll have like a individual period. Then you'll have a group period, which most of the time is inside run or like some type of pass under pressure. Then you're going to have team. 
Then you go to defense. They're going to have an individual time. They're going to do some type of group activity, probably an inside run and team. That is two periods of inside run, and that is two periods of team where you're going to thud or hit. That's a lot of hitting, and that's a lot of wear and tear on the body. And if you think about it from a game week perspective, if you're doing that on Tuesday, Wednesday, that's a lot. Thursday walkthrough, their bodies are now still trying to recover from that. So I had to see what sometimes the defense was doing. So sometimes if I saw they wanted inside run period and team period, I would try to tell the OC, hey, I'm not, I don't want to do inside run today with the O-line because they got to go do it with defense. I'm not doing it. They're, they're just going to work on their assignments. Uh, maybe we're going to work more on pass protection against the hand shield. Like, I don't think we need to inside run. Or work, work with the defense and say, hey, guys, can you – just do team today can you just do inside run today so the offense can get these two periods in and if i knew those were the periods that were happening my individual time definitely wasn't hitting i would hit an individual time let's say me and the offense coordinator decided hey you know what we're just gonna do a team period in the defense saying, hey you know what we're really bad at our assignments we're just gonna work on our assignments i would hit an individual time not one-on-ones but i would send a defense in at them right so it's uncomfortable this is the stuff we had to adapt to. Um, we don't run for punishment anymore. Uh, I don't make them do up-downs when I get mad. I had a situation of practice where they were goofing off and doing things, and I walked away and I said, guys, you you run the rest of the practice. I'm done. I'm going to go help out the wide receivers. Go rest. Go do whatever. Me making them run and do up-downs does not work anymore. It worked when we played. It does not work anymore. So it's an uncomfortable feeling. Embrace the boredom. I don't do drills just to do them. They have a purpose. Um, I do the same drills over and over to make sure they have speed and confidence. Uh, you can adapt and switch up, like adapt and tweak your drills to get the same results. That way it keeps their mind uh, always working. Technique and understanding will help them on a Friday night. Um, and always be simple. That's the big thing. To the injury part. coming. I told you I had no starting offensive line for the same games over and over. Coming into this year. We had no soft tissue tissue injuries on the offensive line. There was no concussions whatsoever. Every year I always had an offensive lineman get some type of headache, concussion thing. Not one. Um, I had a freak, two freak injuries. My right tackle got rolled up on, and like I think he broke part of his bone and stuff, so that was a freak thing. My uh, guard in week nine I was playing linebacker, so it wasn't even an offensive line thing. Went to tackle, shoulder went this way, dislocated his shoulder. Couldn't play in the first round playoff game, but came back in the second round. So from everything else, we had none of those type of injuries at all. Um, now, again, why is it just the old line? This was my year to try to convince the head coach and all the other coaches what I was trying to do. Um, so this year, the head coach is on board. We are full sprint-based, feed the cats. He is fully on board with it. He's going to try to get the other coaches on board so we can do this. So kind of going into what we're going to do this year, this is kind of what I put together, obviously. Is if you go from like week one, Friday's a speed day because it's a game. Saturday and Sunday, we're going to do nothing. Monday, probably in our world, um, sometimes there's a JV game on Saturday, but mainly they're on Mondays. Marcy's going to have a film and walk through, or they're just going to have film and do nothing. Uh, they might have the day off. Tuesday's what we call an X-factor day where they're not going to go as fast as possible. They cannot get up to their full miles per hour. We're still going to work, but they cannot get up to full speed. They need ample time in between. So we have to work together in doing those things. Wednesday, you might add a little more hitting. Um, and by that, I mean maybe more thudding or, or whatever you want, but that's also a speed day. That's why you add some of that into it. Um, Thursday's X-factor. Uh, that's our walkthrough. We do not want to go up to full speed. We're not doing drills. Part of me wants to do nothing, but you have to go out there and walk through stuff. Um, full pads on Wednesday. Um, RPR, you know, people that don't know what RPR is, you know, reflexive performance reset. Got certified in that. That's one of the biggest things in this. Getting the nervous system ready for sprinting, getting muscles activated that they've never used before, breathing and making sure that we are as healthy as possible to try to avoid those soft tissue damages. I've been doing this since February, I believe, or March with the kids. I have a kid, he started off running 17 miles per hour. Now he's up to 19 already. 
like those type of things. I have the offensive linemen doing bounces and stuff to get their ankles stronger. Uh, they're moving quicker. They're bouncing higher. So hopefully this will turn into some of this, but this is kind of where we're going with this to get um, the head coach involved and uh, get this going. So this will be what you'll see in the future. But with your offensive linemen, I, since they're always hitting, you got to take it easy on them. You, oh, you got to be tough and do this. You got to think of different ways to do that. Tell them to play fast. Tell them to play confident. And I think the less you do, the more confident they're going to be, the more comfortable they're going to be. Um, and it worked. It worked. And I'm not saying it was just that that led us to a winning season. We had great, you know, coaching. We had great kids on the outside to make plays and do these things. But we all know it starts up front and ends up front. And because I also had to coach some of the kids that did not start a whole line, they're really defense linemen, but they practice with me in that scenario. I actually think it helped them on defense to be more prepared and to be faster and not as tired. Um, so that's kind of the approach I took with the O-line. Um, less is more. It's uncomfortable. It's not the old school way that we're all used to. Um, it was a lot of uncomfortability for me in the season, but as we got going, it just got easier. Um, right now, working with speed stuff, literally it's 20 minutes. to do something for 10 seconds, get 50 seconds rest, do the next thing. And so it takes us 20 minutes. Only I only say 20 minutes because RPR takes a couple minutes. The workout itself is probably 16 minutes. And then we're ready to rock and roll. And so hopefully we can be different, be faster, and that's kind of this approach. Um, Coach Bancher, that's all I got. Well, my friend, like I said, I love – I mean, I'm with you 100% on, on the Feed the Cat stuff. Like I said, I, I, think, I think we did it this year. Um, I, I mean, we had some minor ankle and other things, but like we had no soft tissue I injuries. We had two concussions all year as a whole team and it wasn't like mm -hmm. any other thing. Like yep. it wasn't, um, we had one shoulder, freakish shoulder injury. Um, other than that, like, I mean, we had minor little things with our ankles and hamstrings, but nothing major that kept anybody out that hindered yep. somebody like. I, like I said, I and I, like I said, I'm, I'm more confident. It's not even just the speed and agility part. Like kind of, kind of like you were talking. Like I, I'm more and more convinced that it's affecting like hydration and other things, which factor into mm -hmm. concussions and other health issues and uh, health safety. And I think that's that's good. Like I have a coaches meeting after this uh, with both my line coaches, and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about is just reps and. Um, technique instead of like mass contact like i could give two cry yep. like yeah you need contact in football i'm not saying you don't but like i, I i'd rather my old lineman execute and be fast and athletic i mean coach uh gonzalez it's on after you it, i mean his thing is out of the the slot t and the flex bone in um i mean i've talked to coach after coach like if you're slow in the slot t you can't play offensive line Mm -hmm. Like you're playing defense, probably you're not playing offensive line at all. So it's like, it goes back to that um, mindset and philosophy. And um, like I said, I think you did a killing job. Um, I will tell you that after you get off here, you need to look at your DM. You'll be sh quite shocked. Um, once you're done, once you're done, don't, yeah. d don't over, overdo it. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, no coach did a good job. Like I said, I mean, like my biggest question for you is, and, and I know people ask, how how are you getting your head coach to buy in? Because as an assistant, that's great. You, I mean, and you doing your own little thing. But how? I mean, again, if you don't get his buy in, I mean, at any program, it doesn't matter. And and, and you can send him as many Tony Holler videos as you want, or it doesn't matter. Like, you, how are you convincing your head coach to buy in? It took it, it took me a couple seasons um one thing i was able to kind of pick out was he did a student teaching at york high school in elmhurst where coach uh chris corpus was and he was the track coach and he came up with the rpr so he was already kind of seeing it so the rpr part he was already kind of involved in but somebody decided he just needed somebody to take initiative and go do it so this off season i said i'm taking initiative and doing that part and then i just kept telling him like this is like look at what teams are doing i just kept having to show him and i think the results of how the old line was different really then affected what he was thinking about he said hey i saw it working there 
yeah, we got six wins, but we kind of were under the radar. How are we going to be different? And I just finally gave it one last feel about let's be different. Let's do this. I think the kids will love it because we need them to show up because we work in a school where sometimes they could disappear and you got to go find them. And finally, he just said, screw it. Let's be different. Just something switched. And it was a lot of me bitching and moaning to get him to do it. I didn't ever left. I see him every morning, never left him alone. But I think me keeping data on the old line, showing him uh, how healthy we were. And he kept watching us throughout practice. And he goes, you know what? Thinking back to his high school days, they did the gassers and stuff. He played at North Central College. And he thought back to that time where he said, we didn't run for punishment. He was thinking back to those times and how successful they were at North Central and said, you know what, let's do it. And he talked to Chris Corpus, I think. They were emailing, really started to think about it. Um, teams around us are starting to, some of them are starting to do it too. So he was talking to them outside of me and said, let's do it. And so he's come to, and he said, but let's just do a trial run. Let's do the sprint stuff in the morning. So we did that. He comes in, he likes it, I keep the data. He's seeing it and he goes, I'm all in. And I'm, so now the next step is getting the other assistant coaches in. And he said, that's his job. So I just do what I do. He'll take care of that. He'll go around the drills and make sure they're done the way they're supposed to be. So hopefully I don't get fired after this year if it doesn't work, but that's the process. Okay. All right. Well, coach, I appreciate you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it off to our next speaker. But again, I appreciate you, coach. And you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. You too, Coach Bannister. Thank you. Talk to you, my friend.